What's the craziest thing that you've ever done for love? We've all done some pretty dumb stuff for someone that we ended up regretting soon after. But what this girl did went way overboard and destroyed her life. Let's dive in. Sarah Ludman was born on December 7th, 1990 to Gay and Charlie Ludman. She grew up in a loving family and was very close with her parents. For most of her childhood, she had been a little overweight and she was always getting teased by her age mates. As you can imagine, this really messed up her self-esteem growing up. Sarah was a straight A student, loved animals, and hoped to become a veterinarian in the future. Everything seemed to be going well for her until she met Joshua Camucho. Sarah had never had a boyfriend before, so when she met Josh at 17, she fell madly in love. Her parents noticed the sudden change in their daughter's behavior and didn't really like it. Sarah's grades had started slipping, she was skipping school, and was also losing weight. Her mom and dad felt that Josh was a bad influence on their innocent daughter. He was a well-known player and a bad boy. He was a smooth talker, smoked, had tattoos, and took pictures with he lived at home with his mom, had no job, and mostly depended on the girls he dated for income. Really, there was nothing going on for this guy, but somehow girls worshipped the ground he walked on. Sarah's parents knew that they could not stop their daughter from seeing him, so they decided to let their relationship run its course. But instead of ending, this teenage love affair only got more intense, to the point that Sarah transferred to Pinellas Park High School so she could be close to Josh. She was so into Josh that she was willing to do anything for him. But sadly, it turns out their relationship was totally one-sided because while she was still swooning over Josh, he was seeing other girls on the side. And one of them was his ex-girlfriend, Rachel Wade. Rachel was born on February 27th, 1990 to Barry and Janet Wade. She grew up in a happy and loving household and was mostly a well-behaved girl. But then when she reached 15, something inside her changed. She became really rebellious and constantly fought with her parents. She ran away from home so many times that her parents got tired of constantly searching and instead they would just call the cops on her. Rachel was also known as a big flirt around town and had a long string of boyfriends. When she was 17, Rachel finally decided that she had had it being controlled by her parents. So she moved out, got her own apartment and started working as a waitress at Applebee's. And that's when she met Josh. When Josh started dating Sarah, he was also seeing Rachel and and another girl with whom he ended up having a kid with. For a while, things worked smoothly for him. Sarah had an 11 p.m. curfew, and Rachel didn't get off work until late in the evening, so he was able to juggle time with his two girlfriends. And for his baby mama, she was so used to seeing him with other girls that it pretty much stopped bothering her. When Rachel and Sarah finally found out about each other, things got crazy. Sarah was the first one to find out after Rachel posted pictures of her and Josh on Facebook. Sarah got mad jealous and confronted Josh about it. And and he basically said, yeah, I was sleeping with her. This was totally not the reaction she was expecting and she got really angry. But instead of fighting Josh, she decided to go for her rival. And that was when things really went down. Sarah posted pictures of her and Josh on a trip to New York and as expected, Rachel was furious when she saw them. She went on MySpace to lash out at Josh, posting, I deserve so much better on her page. But Sarah just made fun of her saying, you think you can find better? Rachel got so mad and she called and left a very angry voicemail. Honestly, what the f you have that's going for you that Josh wants you over me for? And that was just the beginning. The two girls were on an all out war mode and no one was willing to back down. They started writing mean things about each other on social media. They sent threatening text messages and left some really disturbing voicemails on each other's phones. And Josh was not helping the situation at all. All. He continued dating both of them, and he was not even trying to hide it anymore. He would be with Rachel one day and Sarah the next day. It was like he enjoyed seeing the two girls fighting over him and even encouraged it. After a while, the fighting had gotten way out of hand and the girls were now stalking each other and doing some really awful stuff to one another. One time, Sarah and her friends went to Rachel's job and started harassing her. They tried to trip her, knock over her tray, and during karaoke, they sang the song girl fight, pointing at her and taunting. Another time, Sarah chased Rachel down with her car and sprayed her with silly string. On the evening of April 14th, 2009, Rachel was alone in her apartment waiting for Josh when she heard Sarah outside her house shouting, stay away from my man. Rachel would later tell the police that she got really scared and thought that Sarah and her friends were waiting to ambush her. She grabbed a steak knife and called an old boyfriend, Javier Leboy, who told her to come over to his house. So Rachel waited for Sarah to leave and got into 
into her car with the knife and went to Javier's house. Meanwhile, Sarah went to Josh's house to watch a movie and play video games with Josh and his friends. At 11 p.m., Sarah got a text from her dad reminding her about curfew, but as she was about to leave, Rachel started texting Josh. Rachel, now I know why you're not talking to me. You got her. Josh, that's right. I don't like you no more. Why don't you go home? Rachel, no, I'll wait for her to go home. Sarah was furious about it and she called Rachel and they started fighting over the phone and threatening each other. Just before midnight, Sarah decided to go home and Josh's sister asked her for a ride to McDonald's. While on their way, they got a tip that Rachel was at Javier's house and Sarah decided to go and confront her. Sarah pulled over at Javier's and Rachel came running towards her. They both met in the middle of the street. Sarah threw the first punch. Rachel ducked her head down and just kind of started frailing her arms. It looked like a normal cat fight between two teenage girls and lasted for a few seconds. But when the fight finally stopped, Sarah was laying on the ground with a stab wound in her chest. Rachel just stood there with a blank look on her face and said, I'm done. She threw the knife on the roof of a neighbor's house. Then Sarah, who was now bleeding out, did something that shocked everyone. She managed to walk to her car while clutching her chest. She took out her phone and guess who she called? Josh. She called him and said, it hurts. That's insane. She was mortally wounded because of this boy and instead of calling her family or 911, she called Josh. It's actually pretty sad. Anyways, Josh rushed over to Sarah's home and told her dad. I can't imagine how her dad must have felt to have learned that his daughter got hurt fighting for a boy and that her last words were to this boy. Sarah was taken to the hospital, but sadly did not make it. Rachel broke down into tears when the police later told her that Sarah had passed away from her injuries. The next piece of information that you need to know is that she is dead. <laughs> She told the police that she didn't mean to hurt Sarah and that she was only defending herself. She said that she had even forgotten that she was holding a knife when they started fighting. I just wanted them to finally leave me alone. She's not going to follow you anymore because she's dead now. Rachel was arrested and charged with second degree homicide. During her trial, the prosecution brought up the history between the two girls to show that Rachel intended to end Sarah's life. They painted her as a vindictive girlfriend who took a knife with the intent to harm Sarah. The defense used Florida's stand your ground law to show that Rachel was just acting in self-defense. The stand your ground law says that someone doesn't have to run away from an attacker and can meet force with force if they feel their life is in danger. However, several witnesses came forward to testify that Rachel actually found Sarah in the car and stabbed her. They said that they heard Rachel threatening Sarah a few minutes before the incident. Josh also came in as a witness and he was asked what his relationship was with Sarah and he said they were just friends with benefits. Can you believe that? He said that he and Sarah were not really dating and that they could see who they wanted to see. What a jerk, right? I feel so bad for Sarah and Rachel because they both thought that they were literally defending their relationship with this guy when he was probably seeing some other girls out there. Now Sarah was dead and Rachel's life was destroyed, all for nothing. The jury also listened to some disturbing voicemails that Rachel had left on Sarah's phone. Now you're out of mind and I'm guaranteeing you I'm gonna murder you. I'm gonna Oh, yeah. Rachel testified that she was upset when she left that voicemail and that she didn't really mean it. I was upset. I was getting harassing phone calls just like she would tell me she was going to kick. I just retaliated and I said things. I said it out of anger and I was very upset. But the jury was not convinced and they found her guilty of second degree homicide. Rachel started crying when she heard the verdict. Sarah's heartbroken parents later asked the judge to give Rachel a life sentence for what she did. But the judge sentenced her to 27 years behind bars, though he said he believed Rachel intended to take Sarah's life. Rachel still maintained that she was innocent and that she was only acting in self-defense. She later appealed her case but lost. Rachel is currently serving time at Lowell Correctional Institution and regrets everything that happened. In a TV interview in 2011, she said that she wished that she could have done things differently. I tried to think of what I could have done differently and I could have tried to approach her and tell her, you know, it's not me, it's not you, it's him. That's the end of our video today. What do you think about this case? Did Rachel really mean to take Sarah's life? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section.